With update 2.0, so many things have changed, and one thing that seems to have gone pretty under the radar is the quick hack changes. Enemies will now trace you, they'll cancel your hacks, and they'll hack you back and just be an all-around nuisance. So today I wanted to go through some quick hack mistakes and the best quick hacks to use. Let's go. Let me know in the comments your favorite quick hacks. So let's talk about the changes generally and some things to avoid. So no longer can you breach protocol enemies. You can only breach protocol, the actual like jack in things that you jack in to like get daemons and quick hack parts. But some quick hacks have also been renamed or like changed in their effects. Like say whistle is now bait, but it still does the same thing. Like it baits enemies towards you. Ram cost across the board has been adjusted to be more relevant to the effects of the quick hack. The best example of this is that all of the ultimate quick hacks are now super expensive but you can alleviate this with the overclock perk which allows you to activate and use your health bar as additional ram so that's kind of how it's balanced now if you are choosing to do that because of the introduction of cyberware capacity and how critical some of the cyberware is for any sort of net runner build not only do you need to max out your intelligence stat you also need to max out or at least get to 15 your technical ability stat now in any net runner build to grab those cyberware perks which you will definitely need so you can then invest in some of the higher tier and quality cyberware which you'll need for any sort of netrunner built. Cars can also now be hacked with the car hacker perk and you need a cyber deck equipped in order to do this and it's linked to say device hack tiers. So now when you're looking at any of the cyberware if it's a lower tier piece of cyberware you'll only have say tier 1 or tier 2 the high levels will have up to tier 5 and it shows the device hacks that are pre-installed on that cyber deck so things like breach protocol are always available Available, but now in these device hack tiers, you've also got the different car hacks that you'll be able to do depending on the tier of your cyber deck. This is also relevant for say turrets as the turret effects are also now listed as these device different tiers. Now, the other difference with these cyber decks is that they now have these four different icons up the top. The first icon is the actual cyberware capacity that it will consume when you have it equipped. The second is the amount of RAM slots that it has. The third is the amount of quick hack slots that it has that you can equip to that cyber deck. And the fourth is the amount of required required intelligence in order to equip that cyber deck. All the cyber decks also have different passive effects now as well. So make sure you're reading that white text to make sure you're getting benefits from the actual cyber deck that you are using. Now let's cover all the different categories of quick hacks and the best ones. We'll start with the covert quick hacks. Now this is used for like infiltration scenarios to essentially like sneak into areas and apply quick hacks without being traced. Now, every quick hack now is traceable except for covert quick hacks. You'll notice that when you bring up your like scanner, they will say traceable, but the covert ones will not. You have a few options here. The main one you'll use regardless of your build is ping as it reveals all enemies. This is great for stealth and request backup and bait are very similar. Bait will lure a target towards you or lure it towards a camera if you're actually like hacked into a camera at that time and request backup will lure an enemy towards the person that you have requested backup from. The other two, Memory Wipe and Sonic Shock, are similar but different. So Memory Wipe is super expensive and it prevents the target enemy from noticing you for a short time and any quick hack applied to that target afterward is not traceable regardless of the quick hack you apply. Now, what I will say here is that Sonic Shock is actually so much better than this and it's hands down the one that you should be using. Sonic Shock does its own things, but the main thing here is the cloaks the enemy from their allies' sensory system systems causing them to be ignored and scrambling their communication. So they can't communicate with their allies and it also cloaks them from their allies. Now, well, the reason that this is beneficial is it's essentially the same thing as Memory Wipe's ability to avoid being traced. So you can use Sonic Shock on an enemy and it is significantly cheaper with its RAM cost. And then you can pop, say, you know, any type of short circuit or contagion, overheat, any of those combat quick hacks to kill that enemy. And the other enemies won't actually be alerted because they were ignoring that enemy at the time that that occurred. So I would always run Sonic Shock for this reason so you can then stealthily take out enemies by activating this and then comboing it with say short circuit, overheat, etc. Because of the new Q hacking system, you can line these up together and go Sonic Shock, short circuit, bang bang, take out that target, easy peasy. Moving on to combat quick hacks. So the combat quick hacks are the main ones that you'll use to like deal damage in combat scenarios. Like these have had the least amount of changes of the quick hacks. You've still got the, you know, the best ones like short circuit that deals electrical 
damage to enemies. It does more damage to robots, drones, and turrets. You've got Overheat, which is just a great fire damage, like damage over time effect. You've got Contagion for poison damage over time. That will also spread to nearby targets. Contagion is one of my favorites. I always use this in any sort of net runner build. And you've got Synapse Burnout, which will deal heavy damage to the one target, plus some other effects if Overclock is active. So interestingly here, like it, that, nothing's really changed, right? Like Overheat, Short Circuit, Contagion are all fantastic. Obviously use them. Synapse Burnout is not bad, but considering its high RAM cost and the fact that Short Circuit and sort of Overheat to some degree can one-shot enemies unless you're playing on Ultra Hard, you're probably going to use those instead. Control Quick Hacks are not the sexiest category of Quick Hacks. They seem a little underpowered, but when you think about it, they're actually pretty good, especially with the changes to Mono White when you jailbreak it with the Relic Perk Tree from Phantom Liberty. So as soon as you start Phantom Liberty, you'll get access to the Relic Perk Tree, which will allow you to jailbreak via the middle perk is one of the first ones you can unlock. Now, what this does is it gives various buffs to any of these cyberware attachments. The one that it gives for the mono wire is it allows you to add a control quick hack directly into the mono wire. And when you deal a heavy attack with the mono wire, it will also apply that quick hack to that target. So the options here, because it's control is cripple movement, cyberware, malfunction, reboot, optics, and weapon glitch. Any of these are really good, but cripple movement is just tiers above, right? Because when this is applied to enemies, it increases the amount of melee damage they receive by 15%. It also makes them more susceptible to melee finishes, which you can do with the mono wire. And after you have performed finishes, you get your health back plus ram. So by using this to deal a heavy attack to enemies and then dealing a finisher, you get health back, you get ram back, and you also deal more damage to that target with the mono wire. It's like a perfect combination. That's why they are actually really good and that's also why cripple movement is one of the quick hacks you should absolutely use from the covert category cyberware malfunction is okay their target will take more damage and if it's on say a maelstrom right it disables their cyberware which is really good especially if you're fighting something that has like a sand stand or something like that that's super irritating in combat cyberware malfunction can be good for that reboot optics and weapon glitch i don't know about these like i, I prefer to use other things like i always feel that doing damage with something from a combat quick hack is better than say just like stopping them from attacking for a period of time with like weapon glitch or blinding them with reboot optics because by the time that that effect goes off I've probably already killed them anyway so I never felt that these two were really worthwhile. The ultimate category is our final category here. Now we did touch on the best way to trigger these which is by having overclock active because they have such an expensive cost. The reason they have such an expensive cost is because they are hilariously fun and do a bunch of really good effects. Cyberpsychosis for example will just have that target attack anyone in sight and you can put this on any target which is fantastic in encounters where there's lots of enemies and you haven't initiated your own combat yet you can sort of whittle them out by having them fight each other by using that and then you know just detonate some grenades with the detonate grenade quick hack that knocks them out as well suicide isn't as good because if you're using this on like an elite enemy it actually won't kill them because they have too much health so they'll still do the thing where they shoot themselves but they won't actually kill themselves so it sort of defeats the purpose System Collapse is actually better because it will knock out that target and crippling them so they're essentially just like down for that period which is guaranteed compared to Suicide that like isn't guaranteed but for the most part here the two that I would use is Cyber Psychosis because it's well it's fun but it also will have that enemy die once the allies well not their allies right you know what I mean their allies kill them but also like whittle out anyone that they actually kill during that time frame and then Detonate Grenade works as well because it will take out anyone that's in that sort of area when it does detonate including the target as well but that is all of the quick hacks and all the changes with update 2.0 that have come to Cyber Punk 2077. This was originally going to be like a stealth Netrunner build video, but I decided not to do that because the loose video will be out on the channel, which is kind of similar. And I wanted to just cover all of the quick hack changes and everything about the quick hacks anyway. So you can definitely just literally turn everything that I've done in this video into a build and you'll have a great time because quick hacks are still overpowered. You just have to use them right. The same thing with everything in update 2.0. Everything is still very overpowered and super fun. You've just got to get used to the new systems. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and your favorite quick hack. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day. Take.